please don't push me. Please don't push me, but y'all push B. Now we got dwellers from Cali to flat Bush B. Now they got heat on their feet that say press B. And now we so deep in the street, y'all can't stress me. Can't curse me, then bless me. I'm crucifying my flesh, that's less me. SAT from preaching, can't test me. Atheists are now believing, that bless me. Yeah, we got the basement replacing any of those worldly pursuits that y'all chase. Any of those trials and tests that y'all facing Any of the relationships that y'all changing We we arranging, making the shame shift Giving Satan back what's his, that's the blame shift Rise up and walk commands, that's the lame shift Cheat codes for living this life, that's the game shift All on Yeshua man, the rest is manure man I'm dying daily so I rise up a purer man Press and be daily so my sins looking fewer man Washing the blood so my sins down the Superman? Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be uh, Yeah, so press B with me And let's let whatever gon' be just be Welcome to the basement, ladies and gentlemen I am your host, Tim Ross Shout out to all the dwellers Shout out to everyone that has pressed B Shout out to everybody that's been waiting in this live chat, just talking to each other, yapping it up, talking about hurry up already, you're, you're impatient, you, 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 you got demands, huh? You ready to start? You ready to be here? It's a Monday. You woke up, so God got to have some plans for your life. It, it, it may not be exactly what you want it to be, but it is what it is, and you have a grace for today. You have a grace for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's double down on that, shall we? This is the day. Now, it might be this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will. That involves your will. I will will rejoice not like i feel like it i guess I, no no i will rejoice what is that to joy again i will rejoice and be glad in it and so you can be glad while grieving mm. you can be glad while broke mm. you could be glad through a breakup you could be glad through a demotion. You could be glad through getting fired. This is a choice, fam. We wake up in the morning and we get to choose how we're going to be. We don't get to choose a lot of times what's happening with us, but we do get to choose how we're going to be. And so this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm making that declaration for myself um, as I'm personally going through uh, with my dad. Um, uh, thank you all for your prayers. He's at home. I'm grateful that he's at home. And, um, you know, we're making him comfortable and we're still believing God. Um, because God ultimately is the one that we trust and put our hope in. We don't put our hope in doctors. We don't put our hope in the, diagno the diagnosis of doctors. We don't put our hope in the determination of doctors. Doctors give us information. God gives us revelation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me say it again for those in the back. Doctors give us information. God gives us revelation. And so I'm grateful for the information that the doctors give us. And as soon as they do, I'm like, okay, you can step back now. Because with this information, we now get to petition to a loving father. And then he'll give us the revelation on what the future is going to be. And so um, I thank you all for your prayers. Um, I thank you all for, um, and, and I thank you all for your um your sensitivity, right? Like this is um, when you're when when you're out in the public, like we are. Um, you can mention something, and and then uh, everybody hears it, right? And so, 
thank you for your sensitivity. Uh, I'm I'm a I am a very private person who lives a very public life, and um, I'm also a very vulnerable person. And so this is not something that I'm going to keep away from our community. I would I would never dare have you all share something in the live chat or on this couch. Um, and then I sit here and act like I got it all together or I'm doing well at every single moment or whatever. Um, so thank you for your sensitivity to just pray for us and not to be asking for a whole bunch of details like we're going to break HIPAA laws uh, <laughs> uh, with my dad's medical uh, information. But um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really... I, like the Bible means something to me. Like when I, I, I don't, I'm not saying churchy stuff to be churchy. I'm, I'm, I'm actually making a declaration that I, that, that I have anchored in my soul from scripture. Like, I can't even tell you, I know it's in Psalms. I can't even tell you where, where, where that is. Um, um, but that is my, that, that, that's my declaration today, that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And be glad in it. Why? Because um, it's a choice I get to make every single day I wake up. And woo, when I tell you last week was rough for me, child, it was rough for me. And this is what we talk about when we talk about holding tension. When you have stuff to grieve about and be glad about at the same time, ooh, that's tough. It's like, which one do you even pick right now? Which one do you pick today? There's stuff to be happy about and there's stuff to be real sad about. And it's still, it's the same damn day. <laughs> it's like, it would be better if the, like the whole day was happy and then like maybe the whole day was sad. But when you got stuff to be glad about and mad about, to be glad about and sad about, um, you're holding grief and gladness at the same time. And, and you're, you're rejoicing over somebody's wedding over here while you're, lamenting somebody's death over there and you're you're grateful for the the update over here where somebody says i'm cancer free while somebody else is being diagnosed with cancer and starting uh chemotherapy like listen life is like you you could be you could be doing backflips over the fact that this person had just had their baby then you're breaking down crying over here because this person pushed out a stillborn like yo life is life is full Life is full of fill in the blank. Whatever you put in there, fill in the blank. Put put whatever you want in there. What whatever you think life is full of, it's full of it. <laughs> it just is. So you can fill in the blank on it because it's a it's a life is full of life is full of stuff. And whether that's heartwarming or heartbreaking, up or down, good or bad. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It could be a lot. So uh that's where today I'm happy. Like today I'm 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 happy while holding sadness cuz I want my daddy to be better. I love my daddy. I freaking love my daddy. My daddy is the reason why I don't have a father wound. My daddy is the reason why um uh I'm not a statistic. He's the reason why I don't have a prison sentence. He's the reason why I have character. He's the reason why I have integrity. He's the reason why I have morals. He's the reason why I treat women with respect. He's the reason why I look a man in his eye. He's the reason why I won't talk about a man behind his back and not say it to his face. It's all because of Charles Edward Ross. <laughs> that's my guy. When I tell you that's my guy, that's my guy. And so as as I'm literally saying this, my mom sends me a text message right now with my dad eating breakfast. Sheesh. Like literally, I looked down at my phone. She just sent it. 11.08. It's 11.09. So, yeah, that's my dad, man. That's my dad. And I love him. And um, it's not lost on me that I was supposed to be a statistic and I wasn't supposed to have a father and boom, 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 all these different things. But Charles Edward Ross was like, nah, hell no. Nah. I'm going to raise my kids 
and I'm going to be present. And I'm coming home to my wife. And I will love my wife. And uh, I will kill my flesh. My dad had a crazy temper. I have no idea. I think he's lying. <laughs> but he did his work. And he didn't let us see his see us. He didn't let us see him breaking stuff and punching walls and none of that. But he told me, and my mom verifies he used to have a temper. I don't I have no idea. He used to smoke a pack of cigarettes a day. I have no idea. He wouldn't do it in front of us. He said before I got delivered from smoking, I used to walk Walk outside after after y'all ate dinner, and I'd smoke my cigarette. I was never gonna let you see me smoking a cigarette. Then he got delivered from cigarettes. Got delivered from weed. Got delivered from PCP. Yeah, if y'all want to know why I am the way I am, I have a blueprint. I didn't get like this by myself. My parents were disciple makers. Let, let's make that clear. Don't think any church had anything more to do with my character development than God's Way Holiness Fellowship Church. I thank God for Potter's House. I thank God for Gateway Church. But this cake was baked at God's Way Holiness Fellowship. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say that. Yeah, I love them other two churches. Cool. I love Embassy City Church. I pastored that church. But this cake was baked. All them ingredients was mixed in and baked at God's Way Holiness Fellowship Church. Mm -hmm. Maybe some icing got put on at Potter's house. Maybe some words and some sprinkles and some candles got put on that gateway. But make no mistake, God's way holding this fellowship made me. You want to know why I got this much book in me? Because my mom did daily devotion with us every night after we came home from school. When I gave my life to Jesus on January 14th of 1996, there was no question off limits that I could not ask my parents about the word of God that they were not ready to answer right then and there. And if they did not have the answer, they pointed me to a commentary and or another believer who was more mature in their faith and had more anchor in the word to give it to me at that moment. So in 18 months, I had like a five-year growth spurt. So by the time I got to Texas, I was ready for whatever. And that's why I could see straight through BS as well. First of all, I'm from Cali. If you don't, if you don't have your head on straight in Cali, you're going you're gonna to have your head split open, your wig pushed back. So I already had that from the street. But when I got into the church, because I grew up in the church, but don't think that I was like the, the preacher's kid that was like running after church girls and all that kind of stuff. No, I didn't mess with church girls. I messed with hoes. I was out in them streets. I was for them streets until I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And once I gave my life to Jesus Christ, everything changed. Everything changed. And when it changed, it was rearranged. And my life has never been the same since. But I'm telling you, I am telling you, when I made that change 28 years ago, I never looked back, have never looked back. And so my navigation through church this last this last 27 years that I've been in Texas, fam. I had such a good foundation. They had poured so much into me that it was able to withstand anything I was exposed to in church and everyone I was exposed to in church and all the shenanigans of church, all the backbiting of church, all the gossip in the church. And I still love the local church. See, this is what happens when you have your anchor in Jesus and not in man. When you have your anchor in Jesus and you don't have your anchor in man, here's what happens. You get to determine how you navigate the experience. The local church is the hope of the world, and there's some messed up people in it. That's just the bottom line. There's some messed up people in church. It ain't got nothing to do with God. That has everything to do with people. But if you, if you want a perfect church, get out of it. <laughs> you want a perfect church? Get the hell out. You, 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 the, the pastor, everybody. You want a perfect church? Get out and just let the presence of the Lord reside there. And then you'll have a perfect church. But as long as there's a human being in there, oh, yes, including you, including me, it ain't going to be perfect. 
we are being sanctified. We are going through the process of sanctification. And so, um, yeah, you can't trust your flesh when it comes to that. But um, I don't even know what made me get off on that. But I meant that thing. I meant all of that. I don't know why I started that way. But, yeah, I just, I just want to go on record, fam, that uh, I put my hope in Jesus. That's my, yeah, I really do. You know, I am anchored. Absolutely, 100% anchored. And that's why that's why I can still love Jesus and love his people after all these years. Um, and after all I've seen, because some people see certain stuff. I, I don't like the church anymore because of what I saw. I don't like the church anymore because of what they did. I can't believe they did that to me. You ain't special. I hate when people get abused in church. And I still think the local church is the best place for a person to be in community. It ain't perfect. You just got to find the one that you can rock with. If you love to get fit and you like going to a gym, then, you know, maybe Planet Fitness ain't for you. But maybe LA Fitness is. Maybe you like the maybe you like the mom and pop gyms. We got a we got a gym around the corner from us called Brick House Gym. Free advertisement for them in Denton. Brick Brick House Gym. But but somebody else might like Orange Theory. The bottom line is find a place you can work out. Where like a pervert won't be standing behind you acting like he's working out but trying to take pictures of your booty. Right? Like, we're gonna sit here and act like you if you're trying to find the perfect anything, stay out. At home. Had to censor myself on that one. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit is a keeper. I, I I made a declaration that I was not going to use strong language on this mic. And the Holy Spirit just edited me real time. That was dope. Yeah, so stay at home. If, you, if you're looking for the perfect anything, just stay at home. You know what I'm saying? Get, g- go get uh, Sean T's... Uh, what he didn't do Tybo, that was Billy Blanks. What does Sean T do? Something, some workout. Insanity. Insanity almost tore my knees up. Yeah. Do insanity or get yourself a a, a Peloton. You know what I'm saying? G- get the bike. We got the bike or get the treadmill and just run in place. You know what I'm saying? Nigga? Just <laughs> put the little video of you. Just put a video of you running through the damn woods and just take off, nigga. Just, just, and, and, and put freaking Craig Rochelle in your ear or something. Put, I don't know, like, listen to a leadership podcast. Listen to Kerry Newhoff. Listen to Mike Todd. Listen to Tim Rivers, nigga. Like, listen to Robert Madu. I don't, I don't know. Listen to freaking Daniel Groves. These are all my friends. I'm, I'm like, I can only talk about people I know. Um, uh, T25, Di- Diana Hernandez just said. <laughs> Uh yeah like yeah 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 uh yeah the leaderboard uh Brittany wants see you trying to compete Brittany I ain't doing all that with you uh uh I can't honestly I I haven't been I need to get back on the Peloton I really do I used to love be getting on that Peloton um who is my bike wife uh one of them girls my bike wife I can't remember who it, who it is but she had a baby who who who's the trainer that got the baby she she was she's the main trainer somebody gonna put it up here. I need a Peloton person. Uh, who's my girl? Is her name Robin? The girl that had the baby. Somebody put it in the chat. I know it's got to be. It's Robin, right? Jess King, Sophia Orista. No, it's Robin. Robin Arzone. Yeah, it's Robin. It's Robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That's that's that's, that's, that's the bike wife. <laughs> she puts me through it. And then there's another girl with blonde hair. I don't even know if I, I think she's actually an android. I don't think she's a real person. Um, there's no way to sustain. There's no way to sustain your heart rate that long. No, I think she's. I think she's not real. I don't think she's real. I don't think she's a real person at all. Um, and I, I can't remember her name either. But I tried to do some stuff with her, and she hurts my feelings. Um, Peter Emmanuel said Gustavo, and I don't know who you talking about. The fact that you just wrote Gustavo is uh crazy to me um uh, oh it is Allie. oh my goodness that's terrible 
Yeah, it's Allie. Allie's not real. She's not real. She can't be real. That girl's not real. She's not real. Is that Allie? No, that then it's not her. No, this this is a blonde haired girl. I can't remember. No, it's not Allie. It's not Allie. Allie Allie's kind. She's really sweet. It's not her. Um, no, it's not Allie Love. It's somebody else. Anyway, when 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 it comes up there, maybe it starts with a K or a C. I don't know. It's something. It's not Jess. I'll know it when I see it. Olivia. Mm -mm. Oh, I guess it's that that's how long it's been since I've been on there. I don't Kendall, that's who it is. See? See? It's Kendall. You see, you see how my whole body just trauma. That's what that is. <laughs> I'm pointing like, she's the one that hurt me, Daddy. She's the one that hurt me, Dad. Kendall! Kendall, she's not real. Kendall. <laughs> Kendall's not real. I promise you. Nope, she's not real. She's an android. <laughs> Kendall Tool, you're an android. There's nobody that can sustain the heart rate you sustain on that bike. You are an android, Kendall, and I love you. I love androids. I believe in AI. But I just don't think. Oh, my goodness, Kendall. She's in Texas? Houston, Texas, Kendall's not. See, Kendall is brutal. Once, and I'm not healed yet. Maron Solomon, that's my per. Kendall is the Terminator. <laughs> she is. Oh, my God. I can't. And she, like, she's still, how are you breathing regularly? But you got us in, like, a max five heart rate. It, it's not. She's not real. She can't be real. I don't know. She, I, I, she's an android. I think she's an android. <laughs> I'm going with it. Anyway, um uh so so I'm 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 um Yeah, I guess I just needed to say all that today. Yeah. Okay. We uh, Peloton took me out. Um but anyway, it yeah, be be a disciple of Jesus, get in a local church and like it ain't gonna be perfect. So like get over like whatever, like you gotta pick your battles, right? Mm -hmm. For me at this age and stage, I just need some I first of all, I just need a pastor that ain't that ain't cheating on his wife. That's not watching porn regularly. Um uh that's not getting drunk, that's not you know, using the pulpit to mask his uh either narcissistic behavior or insecurities. Um I just need him to preach the word. I, I need the church to like Preach Jesus, Christ and Him crucified. Like, give us the tenets of the faith. Um, uh, let the Holy Spirit convict us of sin, which means you have to be preaching about something that will convict us of, you know, where the Holy Spirit can convict us. And then, you know, um, you know, just be relative. Like, don't steal the money. How about that? How about you don't steal the money? Don't steal the money. I believe, like, like bless your pastor and, and, and make sure he's taken care of. I don't, you know, I, I would rather not have a bivocational pastor whose brain is split between, like, being a part-time firefighter and then trying to get a word on the weekend. Like, like I'll pay my tithes so you can stay at home and read the Bible and then just come give me the word. Like, I'm down with that. We, 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 we pay for, we pay, we, we, we pay people through Twitch and YouTube all types of money, either directly or indirectly through Patreon and all this other stuff to play video games. Y'all niggas is tied into people to play video games and then got the nerve to be mad that the pastor lives in a nice neighborhood. Where you want this nigga to live? You want him to live in the hood? And be going to sleep to, to gunshots and be having a to ask the blood of Jesus to cover him so he can get to get back to you on Sunday? Like, what are you talking about? Stop playing. Y'all playing niggas to play video games, man. Stop playing. Y'all out here got 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 women uh, making $15,000 every four days on OnlyFans, and you mad that the pastor has an Acura. Get the... If y'all don't... If y'all don't... Yeah. What are you doing? What are y'all doing? Stop playing!
Oh, I can't, no, I can't. My pastor is, I can't believe this pastor is out here. He has a, he has a Mercedes. It's freaking, 9,000 people go to this church. He got over 100 employees. You mad that he has a Mercedes? He wrote two books. The book deal was pretty nice. One of the book deals paid for the Mercedes. He ain't in your pocket. But y'all got a secret Pornhub account. <laughs> oh, my God. Leave, leave the guy alone. Stop playing. What do you want this dude to do? What do you want her to do? Yeah, I said her. You know what I'm sick of? <laughs> I'm on one right now. I am sick of the way women pastors are being treated. I'm sick of the way women preachers are being treated. It is hypocritical in the body of Christ right now. It is, it is mad wild that y'all don't believe that God can use a woman to preach. It is crazy to me that men still stand up and walk out of a church service on a Sunday morning because he's not going to let a female preach to him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, you know, it's been wild to me It's to it's to watch uh, pastors who 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 uh, feel like women aren't supposed to preach on Sunday morning. And they wind up having kids, and the best preacher out of their kids is their daughter. <laughs> I think that's just God mocking you. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of sons and one daughter, and your daughter is the coldest Bible teacher out of everybody. Getting booked all around the nation, but she can't preach at your church on a Sunday morning. <laughs> that's hilarious to me. That's the Lord going, I'll show you what I can do. Y'all are wild out here. But the Bible says, I know exactly what the Bible says. Paul said, Paul, Paul's dope. Yeah, Paul meant what he said about women keeping silent. I just don't think he meant what he said to be applied across all time. And y'all do. Y'all do. And, and. It's just a it's just a wild place to like hang your hat and like say I'm going to die on this hill. A woman can't preach to me. But all these male preachers are still sleeping with women in secret. At least a, at least a woman preacher is going back home to her husband or a lot of the women preachers that are single, at least they're going back home. They don't have no I was about to say something crass. They don't have any penis on the side. But how, but how many men do we know that have this this thing? And, and don't get me wrong, there's a lot of women out here, uh, preachers that are lesbians, on the down low, um, and I know that too. I know all the things. A lot of a lot of y'all be mad at me because when I when I when I decide to hit one topic, y'all always talking about. But what about? Well, we ain't talking about that right now. We're talking about this. I know there's two sides to every coin, but let me just address this right now. Well, over here, cause that the 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 the. the, the Hush. When we're talking about a topic, let us talk about that topic. And right now, I'm going to talk about the fact that we got a lot of people out here that won't let women preach, that literally get up while they're preaching and, and walk out because a woman, uh, 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 a woman should not be the head of a man. OK, so if, if the if the if the uh, lead pastor of the church is a male and he's allowed this woman to come preach, is, based on the way you think and you operate, is not that woman operating under the authority of a man? So if, you, if, if you've walked out of a church service where the lead pastor of that church is a man— He's invited this woman to preach and or teach on a Sunday morning, and you walk out of that service on a Sunday morning, you are not walking out on her, you're walking out on him. So now your disagreement is with your pastor? So now you are a brother sowing or sister sowing discord? And you didn't know this about the church doctrine before you joined this church? 
And you can't survive one Sunday? <laughs> y'all sitting up here. Yeah, y'all sitting up here like all these women are only supposed to do women's conferences. Like they ain't got nothing to say to women, to men. Well, she's supposed to teach at home. She's supposed to teach at home. So she can teach she can teach your young sons and daughters, but at what age can your son not no longer listen to this woman? Make it make sense. Tell me tell me tell me the age. When when when, when does when does it become a a, a violation for a woman to teach a man, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And even that, like, if God can use a doggy, why can't he use women? I'm Listen, I don't even like that analogy because then we're putting women on, 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 on the same plane as a donkey. No, I bet you we're not. Do we, do we even remember Genesis 1 and Genesis 2? He created them male and female, them male and female. Then he separated, took out of Adam Eve, brought Eve back to Adam for Adam to go in Eve to conceive and give birth. What are we talking about? And because of the brokenness that happens after Genesis chapter number three, you mean to tell me that a woman has no right to preach the word of God, but she got this revelation and she has this impartation and she's theologically sound, but she can teach other women. A man can't be present, though, because nobody can learn from Priscilla Shire, except just make sure it's all vaginas in the room, because if a penis gets in there. If a, if a man gets in the same room with, with Priscilla Shire and then she's speaking, or what happens to that man? He, he'll be corrupted by her revelation. If Jackie Hill Perry is, is convicting people about the word of God, and, and this is one of our, our, our premier theologians in, 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 in my generation f for sure, uh, but Jackie Hill Perry should only she, let her do her glory conference, but no men should show up there. The glory is just for other women. Let the glory be for other women, but don't let Jackie, don't, don't, I, I'm a man. I can't read Jackie Hill Perry's devotional because if I read D Jackie Hill Perry's devotional, maybe I'm trans. Are you serious? Do y'all even hear yourselves? What are you talking about? You cannot be serious, but you are. And that's what's scary. That, that, that Nona Jones can't come speak at your church. Dr. Anita Phillips can't come speak at your church because she's a woman. Latasha Morrison can't come speak at your church. Y'all got all of these, all of these theological hangups like, like that are non-essentials. If you have a preference, that's one thing. But, yo, if you go... It's, it's, it'd be crazy when people are, you, you are at your own church, though. You're at your own church. The lead pastor brought a woman in to speak. And then this is the, this is the time that you want to protest. You want to protest as she's saying, turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter number three. You're like, that's where I stop. <laughs> I let you do the introduction of this woman. And I let you, I let you, I, I just watched the video intro. But now that she's cracked open her Bible, I must leave now. This is where I make my stand, right here. That's just wild to me, fam. That's just wild. And so um, I am, uh, what, I, I'm going to let y'all do what y'all do. Y'all go ahead and make your reaction video and go ahead and, you know, make your new clip and pay your rent. Y'all go pay your rent. Make sure, my, make sure you get a good cut out of my face and go pay your rent. Go pay your car note with my face. Go make it happen. I love y'all. I'm glad I could help you make ends meet this month. Um, uh,
Am I? Am I lying? No, you're helping them. Uh, I don't know. I just uh, I I know I'm paying somebody's mortgage. So make your reaction video. Um, take the excerpt. Don't don't use the before or after that would give context. Just use the soundbite that will cause more division in the body of Christ. Make sure you got to use eleven seconds. Don't don't use fifteen because if you use fifteen, if you use fifteen seconds, l let me let me give you uh, let me I I'll tell you exactly how you should do it because I want to make sure that you do it right. Um, I'm gonna show you just how Satan did it. Um. So I want y'all to, I just want, you know, since Satan is your boss, let me, um, I want to, I want to, I want to make sure you do it just like Satan. Cause Satan knows how to edit a clip too. Um, here's what, uh, here's what, here's what, um, uh, Psalm 91, 11, 12 and 13 says. Psalm 91, 11, 12, and 13 says this, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Verse 13, that's 11 and 12. Verse 13, you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. That is Psalm 91, 11, 12, and 13. Uno momento, por favor. Luke, chapter number four. Luke, chapter number four is what I want. Um, second temptation. Uh, starting at verse five. This, this is Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness. Then the devil took him to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you. <gasps> Satan reading that Bible. Is Satan reading that Bible though? I think he's reading the Bible. If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot against a stone. Note to self, Satan knows the Bible. Note to self, Satan edited the Bible. He gave Jesus just enough to see if he would compromise himself. But he didn't know that extracting a word to the word is absurd. And so Jesus' response says, the scriptures also say, <laughs> you must not test the Lord your God, which is taken out of Deuteronomy. So what am I saying? Make sure you get your clip right. For your, for your edit video, to, for your reaction video to work, you got to get nine seconds of what Tim Ross said. Then you got to stop it. Because if you play the rest, then they'll have context, and then they might be like, I don't think he meant that. And then make sure you get a big silhouette of my face. Because that's you mean that's how your algorithm is gonna pop. So make sure you just get the right picture of me, so you can do it right, and then you can be just like your father, Satan. Okay, um, we're coming to NYC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what type of transition this is. But <laughs> should, we, should we just play the video? Keep it simple, Jack. Yeah, let's play the video, and then I'll let y'all know what's going on. Watch hey. this. Yay. What's up, NYC? I am so excited to be in your city. It's going to be absolutely amazing when we all get together. So press be with me and let's let whatever going to be just in Y. Yo, listen to this, listen to this, y'all. We are turning NYC into NYB. New York City is about to come New York's basement, fam. We are coming to New York. And so we are doing a live show in New York on what, February 19th? 
February 19th, and link is in the description for your chance to come to our live show. Yes. Under seats only. Yeah, yeah. So so you got to, we, we got limited seats. There's only 100 seats, but we're going to do a live show in NYC, and um, we will interact with the live chat. But, man, if we get 100 people live in New York, oh, it's going to go down. It's going to go down. We're going to keep the same time. We'll probably go, I feel like if we got a live show, it's probably going to go three hours. You think it's going to go four hours? Have what? Fun? Man. Okay, three. Three? Then we'll hit the bodega. Yeah, yeah. And we got to go to the bodega. <laughs> we got to go to the bodega, man. So so uh, we're coming to NYC. We are turning NYC into NYB. Um, and we're just going to create a safe space in NYB uh, for our dwellers uh, to get together. And maybe even some people that are not dwellers, right? If if maybe you've listened to a couple of pods and you're like, I want to I wanna come see this guy in person or... Uh, I just want to see what the community is about. Maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you're like, I, I can't stand the dude. And um, m maybe that won't change when you see me or meet me. But I'm going to hug you anyway. Um, but we only got 100 seats. The link is in the description. Make sure you reserve your spot. Um, if, you, if you just pull up and you have not reserved it, you are going to have the biggest womp womp of all time because we won't be able to help you. Like, when I tell you we won't be able to help you, that sound effect right there is righteous. I didn't even know that that was there. Um, uh, but, yeah, you'll have the biggest womp womp of all time. And so uh, uh, I, I, want, I want us to be able to get together, love on each other, um, answer some questions if we can, and just overall vibe out. NYC is a great city with a lot of great people, and I know we got dwellers out there, and so um, I look forward to us getting together, being connected. It's going to be amazing. Uh, speaking of um, NYB, I need to let y'all know that we are, as of today, uh, less than a month away from Welcome to the Basement um, dropping. Um, the book will be in bookstores uh, all over the place, um, Target, Books a Million, Christian Books, Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, um, Walmart. It's going to be everywhere. And so I'm really excited about it coming out. And we are going on tour. Did somebody say tour? Did I hear tour? We are going on tour. Welcome to the Basement Tour uh, is going to drop and it's going to be it's, oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. To be able to go from city to city is going to be amazing. Now, I want you to understand this tour is for the book. This is for the, this is for the book specifically. This is not a basement tour. This is a welcome to the basement tour. And so um, if you haven't got your book, what are you doing? I need you to get that book, right? Um, Pre-order the book um, and... If we're, if we're even close to your city, come through, right? Like, the, the travel, it don't bother me one bit. We'll jump on a plane. We'll get to where we need to get. I will stay. I will hug you. I will sign your book. I will do whatever because we can't, we can't be on the New York, uh, New York Times best dwellers list without you. Like, that, that, this, is a, this is cooperation. This is participation. This is anticipation of us making our mark as dwellers uh, in culture, right? Society and culture. It's the reason why I even moved the pod from Christianity, which we were consistently in the top 10 in Christianity, and we moved it over to society and culture because I'm so grateful for all the people that have already said yes to Jesus. But fam, we over here in the highways, byways, bushes, and shrubs. This is Matthew 22, and this is Matthew, and this is Luke 14. This is us being part of the search party and compelling people to come to the wedding feast, to come to the banquet table, there is room for you at the banquet table. Whether you are blind, crippled, it doesn't matter. Whether you're lame, whether you've been hiding under an underpass, behind the hedges, in the bushes, down a country lane, wherever you are, we're compelling you to come to the master's house. There's a seat at the table for you. He has a fresh change of clothes for you. You do not have to stay the way that you are. And so we get to go on tour and if we get close to your city, please join us because um, we just get to celebrate with each other. And so I'm really looking forward. Um, we start traveling uh, the end of February, and then it'll go all the way through March. The dates will be on the site by Wednesday. 
So um, uh, look for your city. By Wednesday, look for your city. Um, how many people? How many people in the live chat right now? One fourteen hundred people in the live chat. I love y'all. In the middle of the day, I swear y'all must have never came off of them COVID pro protocols like ever. Y'all still working from home? Y'all still wearing a mask? What is y'all doing? How is fourteen? It's the middle of the day, fam. This is not nighttime. How are you still up? How are you not getting caught? Aren't you supposed to be logged into your computer? How are you getting done? Are, are you even being effective at work? Are you giving your employer a, 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 a decent eight hours? Are you trying to get promoted? <laughs> Why are your Mondays like this? No, I'm just playing. I love y'all being here. And I feel like you, I feel like some of y'all can do both in, in, in whatever your profession you're in. I don't know what you're doing, but I, I appreciate you rocking with us. Maybe, maybe you just got us on in the background and you're just catching every 17th word. I don't know. Uh, but I appreciate you being dialed in with us right now. Um, this tour, this tour means something to me, um, because of the season that I'm in right now, uh, what I'm walking through with my dad, um, the way he wired me to, to, to be, um, he, he, he won't even let me, uh, stay by his side if he knows I have responsibility. And, and so, um, I'm not doing this tour for my dad, but my dad is in the back of my mind. I know it. Like he's just in the back of my mind as I'm as I'm preparing to do this because again I'm I'm holding the tension of grieving something and being glad about something. I'm so excited that I get to spend some time with you all, and I wish I could spend all the time with my dad. And um, so I just do my best to do both in, in this season and the space that we're in. If you when, once the dates come out, if you can again, if you're close, if we're even close to you and you can get to us, make it happen. If it's gonna inconvenience you if it's gonna if if it's gonna um put you out on money or something like that just you don't have to do nothing i want everybody to get the book that can um i want everybody to buy a book for a friend that can if you ain't got enough money to buy the book just hey just give me a thumbs up and be like yo i'm praying for you but that's not in my budget right now i have different priorities i um uh was it last week yeah last week I gave a dude, a, 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 oh, ah, yeah, I love telling these type of stories. So, again, you know, upsetting the world is how we live. Like, being a basement dweller and, and blessing people is how we live. So, last week I was at the hospital with my dad, and um, I ordered Uber. And, uh, you know, you I always look at the driver. Like, I always pull up the big picture of the driver. I don't just look at the little picture. I pull it up. Like, I'd be looking in his eye to see if he was in front of a ring light or if somebody was holding it up, if he was in front of a mirror. I'd be peeping game. That's the, that's the detective in me. My uh, that, that LAPD homicide detective thing is still in me. So, so um, and, and then I always read the, the why, if they have, like, a why. Like, oh, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to pay off student loans or it's a second job. You, you know, I'm a single mom or, like, all that stuff gets to me. So this dude was, like, um... He put in his like little reason why he does Uber Eats was Dave Ramsey made me do it. And I was like, oh, this dude has picked up a second job so he can pay off debt. I'm like, do you know how commendable that is? Like, that's a. Like, it's one thing to be like, I want to get out of debt. It's another thing to be like, you know what? I put myself in this debt and the only way is I'm, I'm going to get out of it if I generate a second income and that income is just going to go to debt. And I've chosen to be responsible and not just believe God for debt, supernatural debt cancellation. <laughs> I'm going to have to put some work in on it. And I'm like, man, I'm really inspired by him. And the Holy Spirit was like, give him $1,000. I said, K -k 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 -k. this is an expensive Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> this just got expensive. God, you must love, the, you must love Carlos. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was commendable, but now, and the Lord Holy Spirit was like, "Give him a grand." I was like, "Okay." So I uh, texted him before he got to us. I was like, "Hey, homie, um, do you have a cash app? And if you do, make sure I get it." Did I tell this story already? Oh, I didn't. Okay, uh, dude, I've been talking so much. I'm like, I don't know who I talked to. <laughs> so, so um, uh, this dude, the the uh, this dude was like, um. Yeah, I'll give you my cash app. So he gave me his cash app. 
And then when I went down to get my food, I, I sent it to him. And he looked down and he was like, bro, are you serious? I said, yeah, man, I love you. And I'm just, I just appreciate your dedication to like, and he was like, bro, no, 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 no. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I was like, God just loves you. He just loves you. He was like, bro, thank you so much. Gave me a big hug. Ch chunk the deuces. Again, we, everything ain't, ain't about like, do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Some stuff is about seed. Some stuff is about irrigation. The Lord brings in the harvest. But all I did was sow a seed that day into a man that was just following a Dave Ramsey plan. I didn't ask to do what he believed and all that kind of stuff. And so um, God puts us in positions every single day to be blessings like that. And um, this is stuff you're, you're going to learn when you read the book. Like the, the Welcome to the Basement as a book is really like the manual on, on the basement philosophy. If you want to know how we think about what we do, read this book. Like that's one of my favorite reasons why this book is coming out is because I don't have to explain that no more. <laughs> like, like it's one thing to say, go, go back and listen to the first podcast we ever did where I explained the, the vision of the basement. It's another thing to say, I'm going to put it in your hand and all questions will be answered once you read this book. And so if you've been holding out or maybe you was waiting for payday or whatever, please get just pre-order the book. Um, either physical copy, if you're like me, I need a physical copy. Or if you're uh, an audiophile, um, the audio copy, bless you, Hector, uh, the, the, audio uh, the audio book um, has been doing great. The publisher said that the, it's, it's, it's amongst the best for audio books that, the, that he or she has seen, which I'm super happy about. Um, I did read the book myself, and I did it in a day. Huh? Don't ask me how I accomplished it, but I did it in a day. And when I went for pickups... Pickups are after the, they go listen to the whole audio book and they bring you back in uh, to do pickups on some places that maybe you messed up. I, I will say, as humbly as I can, I only had two pickups. I was literally in there for seven minutes. They were like, bro, you, you got two pickups. You have to say the, you have to re say the word the here. And then you got to re say it, some scripture you said, like you, it, the, the, the guy's notes was like, it, I think you muffled Matthew for whatever scripture I, was, I quoted. So I only had two pickups. So I read the whole book. I just thought to myself, if people came from the pod and they get the audio book, like, how could you hear another voice? That would be weird. Like, go from me, this voice, this cadence. And I don't even know, I don't even know how you stand my voice. But, but for some reason, God has given you some grace or whatever because... I don't know. My voice be doing a whole bunch of stuff. Anyway, but imagine going from me to Welcome to the Basement by Tim Ross. Page one. I had a vision one day that there was a 100-story building. I looked at it and thought to myself, I should go in. Upon entering the building, I found that there were no pictures on the wall. It was sterile. It was white. It was cold. I pressed the button to go up to the 100th floor. I'm dying already. I'm just doing this as an example. I'm already dying. <laughs> I could never do this, okay? So I couldn't put y'all through that. I couldn't leave you with like a boring reader voice guy who is a failed voice actor who was going to read my book and get paid like I don't know 2 grand. Uh and and my 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 passion project is to read the entire Bible cover to cover. Audio. That's my passion project. That's one of my legacies I want to leave. I don't have I'm not Dr. Tony Evans. I cannot leave you a commentary. <laughs> I'm not smart enough. I didn't go to I haven't gone to any Bible college. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to me. Um, uh, but I do want to do the whole Bible audio. That would be, that's one of my passion projects. Um, all right. What are we getting into? Because what time is it? Huh? Uh, lunch order, boss, for you, my friend. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Whataburger patty melt. Huli, Huli's like, you ain't answering no questions till you answer mine. My bad. Did you? Did, I didn't ignore a text from you, did I? The, oh, this morning? Julie, you want to hop on the mic? Dang, Huli. Uh, let me tell you something. Huli be keeping me in line. Um, uh, where where is everybody getting food from? Seven Mile Lynch, Chipotle, and Taco Bell. Taco Bell. They took away the seven layer burrito. I can't rock with Taco Bell. Mm. And I think Taco Bell gets a bad rap too. Like everybody, like the whole like Taco Bell is associated with diarrhea. No, nah, that like everybody ain't got IBS. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some some people some people got. They got intestinal fortitude, like for real, for real. Like, you know what I mean? Amen. They can eat anything and just be like, we Gucci. Praise God. Everybody ain't got that little Bambi stomach. Everybody ain't got that baby goat stomach. Everything they eat just coming out the other side. Rah! So we don't want to be in that situation. Okay, so we got we got seven mile. Um, I think I still want to do my juice stuff. So so I think I think um is there like a no? I don't want to do the smoothie though. Is there like some kind of like I know there's orange juice, but I know there's also like a kale juice or something. Yes, the they, green I want the green smoothie. Okay. Give me the green smoothie and the orange juice. Okay. Yeah, and I'll and I'll do that. <laughs> Y'all wild at Bambi's stomach. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is to look up at the chat and just see what y'all are tickled by. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. Um, I mean, we can get into a lot today, peeps. You just let us know. We got the chat and uh, voice message questions. We got voice message? Yeah. You want one? Let, let's do let's do a voice message first, and then we'll jump in the chat. Roger that. Hey, Tim. Uh, I prefer not to share my name, and I'm just get right to my question. Um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and they stated that they believe that uh, we are no longer sinners, which got that, um, that you can go days, even months, without sinning. Hmm. I disagreed. I told them that we make over 33,000 decisions a day, um, and I do not believe that we can go a single day without sinning. Um, they refer to like actionable sin. Hmm. I'm more so talking about action. I'm talking about any any form of sin. Um, I personally don't believe that we can go a day without the sinning. Of course, the Holy Spirit can do it. obviously believe that. However, um, we do have free will as well. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted your thoughts on that. Do you think that we can pretty much go an entire day or days, months without sinning? Or is it something that we will be faced with every single day and uh, end up possibly falling into every single day, but we still have the beauty of grace without abusing it? We still have the beauty of grace. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's a that's a very interesting question. I appreciate you asking it. So um, the, the, the first thing that, that's top of mind for me is um, helping people understand what happens at salvation, the moment you give your life to Jesus. The moment you give your life to Jesus, you are made righteous. That's a positional thing. You are made righteous. I am I am no more righteous today than I was 28 years ago when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. January 14th of 1996, I was made righteous by placing my faith in Jesus Christ. And I have not become more righteouser <laughs> over the last 28 years because positionally that was done for me through Christ Jesus. What I have become over the last 28 years is more free. I've become freer over the last 28 years. And so when, when we talk about... Um, giving our lives to Jesus and like no longer sinning. I don't look at it in, 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 in terms of days. Um, I just know there's grace for me if I miss the mark that I know. Um, and, and to your point, there is no, I don't wake up in the morning. Like I cannot wait to use God's grace today. Cause I just don't feel like living right. Uh, so I'm going to mess up today. And I'm not talking about like premeditated stuff. Um, uh, I, it's hard for me without hearing the other person that, that you were having this conversation to understand what they deem sin. Right? Because some people, 
some people believe that the only thing that's sinful is like an actual behavior or an actual item. But Jesus was very, very clear that if you look lustfully upon a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery, <laughs> right? Like, like you, you say, um, you know, thou shalt not kill. I say, if you're angry, you could sin, right? So, so I, I, I just think that it would behoove us to be self-aware, not just of the things that we do, but the stuff that we think, because your thought life could be having a party. I don't believe all thoughts are are okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm talking too much. Let me just give you some Bible. Oh, James, James, please come help me, James. All right, so James chapter number one. Uh, starting at the 12th verse, God blesses those who patiently endured testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from our Father who created all the lights in, hev in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of, uh, out of all creation, became his prize possession. So this is kind of like my my litmus test on do is, is there a thought and or temptation that has hit my mind that I am dwelling on. Not not that just hit my mind. I have what I call invading thoughts. Thoughts that I know that that just hit my mind and they didn't come from me. Just came out of nowhere. Well, I have the choice whether I'm going to think about that and dwell on that, or if I'm going to tear that thought down, the wicked imagination, right? And um, to your point, you could have, you know, we, we have 33,000 thoughts a day. I doubt all those thoughts are holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you read the Bible from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. I know for myself, if there's 33,000 thoughts based on the life that I have lived, I can tell you a few thousand of those thoughts are probably ungodly. But am I dwelling on those or am I, am I just letting those pass? Because whatever I dwell on will grow. And then it will, con it will conceive and then it will give birth to sin and then there will be a death of some kind. So for me, what I say is, Mind your thought life. Don't just, if you're just looking at action and you're letting all these thoughts pass, I know people that just sit up and have petty thoughts all day. And my encouragement is mind your thoughts, mind the things that you are allowing yourself to think about over and over and over again. Pay attention to that stuff because your thought life is going to be with your what your outward actions are. You already know my statement. Whatever doesn't come up and out of your mouth through words will come up and out of your body through actions. And um, I hope that helps. That's my that's my shot at that one. Um, mm -mm 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 -mm. bounce those eyes. Yeah, that's old school right there. I remember that. Can salvation be lost when there's no relationship with Jesus? My response to that is, do you actually have, can, are you actually saved if you have no relationship with Jesus? That would be like saying that I'm married to my wife, but I haven't seen her in 20 years. M maybe, maybe on paper, but like, is there intimacy? Is there, is there actually relationship? I don't think so.
Um, Stephen Harris, conspiracy theories. How should Christians engage with them, and how should we react with fellow Christians who have gone off the deep end with them? I don't know. Is that a two-part? I don't know what that is. Sorry, Stephen. I need more context to what that is. Um, uh, Jive, Jivey01. Hey, Unc, question. Uh, I'm convicted to stop eating... It's right up there. I'm convicted to stop eating fast food, but I'm but I keep struggling with this. Um, it may kind. Can you go back up? It may kind weird, but I feel so strong about. I feel so wrong for doing it. Any tips? If you feel con- convicted about eating fast food, but you're having a hard time stopping, the 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 Lord definitely wants you to stop eating fast food. <laughs> I can tell you that for a fact. And here's why I know. Because anytime God tells you to stop something, your flesh is going to fight. Now, I know the Lord told you to stop eating fast food. Don't put another Burger King burger in your mouth. That's definitely the Holy Ghost. And the fact that you're struggling means that it's, it's, you need to fight the good fight. You don't know what he's trying to spare you from. But if you're having a struggle, that just means your flesh don't want to die. And, you're, and if your flesh doesn't want to die... Um, that means you're doing it right. Like, like, like these people, the, the, I'm tired of people taking credit, like, like as a believer, right? Like, oh, I don't struggle with that. You never did. <laughs> I, I've kept my sexual purity. No one wants to have sex with you. <laughs> How easy? Of course, of course you've kept your sexual purity. You have no options. No one's throwing it at you all day from either direction. So what is the so so you can't take credit for that? I, I I've always been fit. I, I you know what I, I keep my body as a temple of the Holy Ghost. Everybody in your family's skinny. You have a high metabolism. You've never had to struggle with obesity. So stop trying to take credit for stuff that you've never even been tempted with. I'm not tempted by calamari. I don't like it. Huh? Hot apple pie, Dutch alamode. Amen. Dutch alamode apple pie Woo. with vanilla bean ice cream. Uh-huh. That's a thing for me. Uh-huh. That's a thing for me. That's a struggle. So it's not a fight if you've never been tempted by it. Mm. Mm-hmm. You've been convicted. Oh, I, I, I shouldn't eat fast food anymore. And now what, what are you struggling with? Eating fast food. Of course. You just found this place where your flesh doesn't want to submit to the will of God. But you're going to drink that kale juice and eat that salad. And you're going to leave all that fried, nasty food alone. And now let me give you Bible so that you don't feel bad. I want you to know that you're in great company. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, and, I, and, I've, and I've said this the last few weeks, but it keeps recurring, so I want to keep saying it. Romans 8, 7, for the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. The end. If you want to know how our sinful nature is going to react to the submitting to the will of God in our life, it's going to always be violent. There is nothing in our bodies that wants to willingly submit to the will of God. At our base level of human as humans, we want to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And guess what? And guess what God's asking of us? The crucifixion of our flesh. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're, you're, you, you're, my body belongs to Christ Jesus. It's no longer mine. I don't get to do what I want to with it. Do you know how many do you know how many people would be saved right now if they could continue on as they were? Mm. Mm. That's why we got to get away from these preachers that that keep saying, you know what, as long as you as soon as you give your life to Jesus, everything's going to change and it's going to be great. Jesus didn't even say that. How are you saying something our rabbi never said? How is that your ad pitch? Cuz you care more about members than you do disciples. Mm. And Jesus never cared about a following. He never cared about growing. He cared about developing disciples. 
John chapter number six, for Jesus to say, eat my flesh, drink, drink my blood, not explain himself, watch the majority of his disciples leave, then turn to his original handpicked 12 and say, do y'all want to leave too? That's not a man that's interested in growing anything. He's interested in spiritual depth, not numerical growth. That's why we keep it a buck with this podcast. Listen, I, I knew this podcast wasn't going to hit a million overnight because I don't have that happy, happy, joy, joy message. You're going to come here and die. If I got to die, you do too. I ain't going to be the only one down here in the basement <laughs> crucifying my flesh and y'all out here just doing the splits, doing cartwheels. <laughs> On our caskets. I, yeah, I'm not doing it. Like, no, 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 no. I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ that lives in me. That's the way I got to live. It's the reason why I hold my tongue when the, when the Holy Spirit convicts me. It's the reason why I don't clap back when my flesh wants to. It's the reason why I don't pull up to people's church on Sunday, even though they're 20 minutes down the street. After I heard what they said about me. Why am I not doing that? Because he won't let the nigga out. I don't get to do that. But if we if 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 we're not if we're not honest about that and we just keep on throwing Jesus glitter over no no you give your life to Jesus and everything I'm telling you God's going to do something supernatural in your life and and everything's going to just be just just roses and lilies and little and just glitter sprinkled through the air you're going to see a twinkle every single day. And Psalms 23 doesn't say, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? What are we talking about? The life, of, the, the life of being a disciple of Jesus did not promise you exemption from persecution. Quite the opposite. It actually promised you persecution. And many of us in the Western world have never come close to it. We are privileged to live in a country like the United States of America. We, we haven't experienced no persecution. We've experienced some problems, and we, we've, we've been pestered, but persecuted? Stop playing. No, we haven't been persecuted here. Ask Palestinians, Palestinian believers in Jesus if, if they know what persecution is like. Ask Ukrainian believers if they know what persecution is like. Ask Ethiopian believers Liberian believers, Malaysian believers, Chinese believers, if they've been persecuted. They know persecution. We know pestering. So no, yeah, no. You, you come down here, you got to give your life to Jesus. And you got to mean it, or you won't stay down here. That's the thing. You can come down to the basement, and you can be like, you know what, I don't like it down here. And you can not like it for another, like, like, there's a lot of people like me that are not like me. So I'm not the if I'm not your cup of tea, I invite you like go listen to the Perry's podcast. Preston and Jackie Hill Perry, I love those people. They make great content. Maybe you don't like the word. Maybe you don't like me for saying nigga. Maybe you don't like me for saying damn or hell or whatever. And you don't have to listen. I promise you, I'm not the only one. I, I, I there's a tribe of people. I'm not the only one doing this. And I'm I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But you can go listen to. The Perry's. You can go listen to Preston, the leader's cut, and you can skip all the episodes with, with me on it. There's a lot of great content creators in this YouTube space. If you're just talking about podcasts, if we're talking about preachers, I can give you a list of preachers and teachers that I know are good. They love Jesus. But y'all know, I keep it a buck. I don't code switch. I, I, I don't do none of that. So, so I'm not everybody's cup of tea. But that doesn't mean that you can't find somebody that's going to be truthful with you about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I'm, I am not for the people that treat a relationship with Jesus like it's a walk in the park. Because it's not. This dude asked a question about being convicted about fast food. That's a real thing, fam. You know how expensive it is to live healthy to, to eat healthy. A, a double quarter pounder with cheese is a couple of bucks. A healthy salad? You about to set you back about $14 to have a real organic egg laying on top of 
that romaine. <laughs> to get a goddess dressing that doesn't have uh, extra artificial sugar in it, you about to pay $17 for a salad when you could have had four large fries at Chick-fil-A. I'm just saying, man, it ain't convenient. But if you're going to do it, this is what it looks like. All right, Keita, uh, Pastor, how do you continue to serve your wife through dry seasons when it's human to have some level of expectation that the serving and loving will create intimacy sex and not come back void? I find myself struggling day to day to serve through the lack. Understandable. Makes that That's very, very understandable. Um. I, but I think you I think you may have answered your question because you called it a season. This is a dry season. It's it's just a season. And you gotta you gotta keep that top of mind. This is a season. And a lot of people don't understand this about relationships. I, I try to talk about this, or I tried to talk about this when I did a lot of premarital counseling. I don't I don't do that anymore. And I, I'm saying that up front so y'all won't ask me to do yours, because I won't. Um, uh, uh, but dr a dry season is just that when you, when you get into a relationship, I always advise the couples to, to, to go through what I call a relational season before they get married. Cause you want to see this person in each season. Um, and it's, uh, and let's go through the seasons in the same way we would go through seasons, our natural seasons. When you first get into a relationship, it's spring, it's new love. It's the, it's the, it's the enamorment of the new. It's just so, oh, this person is new and they are exciting and they're, they're, there's these, the, uh, everything's in bloom and, and, and the bees are buzzing and oh my goodness, I just have discovered this person. And there's no one like this girl and there's no one like this guy and oh, oh my God, I think I'm in love. It's so beautiful. Uh, and then you go from spring to summer, and that's when things heat up. So now we go from the newness of this discovery of this person. To now things get hot, and it gets passionate, and it, it is, this is where you got to keep people off each other, right? This is where you got to, like, watch out for the premarital sex, and this is where you got to watch out for the inappropriate text messages. <laughs> this we got to watch out for if you're, if you're a believer in Jesus, right? Like, it, it's hot right now. I, like, I want to give myself to this person because I'm in love and it's passionate and it's, and it's beautiful. That's great. And, 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 and people are enamored with those two seasons. Here's what happens. That newness and that passion is going to have a fall. You're going to hit autumn. Things are going to change. And in the discovery phase and in the passion phase, you will call a red flag hot pink. No, that's not what they really are like. No, they were just hungry that day. No, they they snapped, but they didn't mean it. Why? I'm still in love. He cute. She's fine. So you're calling hot. You're calling red flags hot pink. But then you got to stick around for the change. Those green leaves turn a burnt orange, and then a a real uh, tan brown. And then what was up falls. And if you don't have a rake, you will swear stuff is dying. How come you didn't text me back? I text you four times. Was you with some other girl? Ooh, this change has just brought out that you got a little jealousy. Maybe you were hurt by your last boyfriend. Maybe you were hurt by your last girlfriend, and now you're projecting into your next relationship the pain of that that you didn't address in your in your previous relationship. Things are starting to change, and just where you find out, like try to figure out what that season is like, things go cold. It's the winter of the relationship, and if you still got on that tank top from summer, when winter hits you'll literally think something's wrong with them. It's just cold. It's not like it was. You know what? I don't think this is going to work. And this is where most dating relationships break off. Most of them don't get past fall. But winter? Oh, they break up in winter. And guess what they run for? Their rebound is summer. They don't even get to spring no more. They rebound straight to summer. 
They leave Boston, Massachusetts and fly straight to the Dominican. Why? They, they want to warm up. They can't handle the season. They didn't have no salt bags to put on the ground. They didn't have no shovel to clear a path in the driveway to get to the mailbox. They didn't have no layers to put on. They never heard of North Face. They never heard of REI. They don't know what it is to put on long johns, a double pair of socks, a thermal layer under their dress shirt. They don't, they're not prepared. Bottom line, whole car full of rust because they didn't know how to treat it in the winter. Driving, driving down the highway like this, sideways, because they never got their tires fitted with chains to be able to handle a rough winter. I've been married to Juliet for this year will be 25 years. We've been through spring, summer, fall, and winter. Wash, rinse, repeat over the last 25 years. We know how to handle the season. We were cold in one winter. Next winter, we was all warmed up. Why? We ain't going through that like that again. I got myself a jacket. You want to go You want to go make snow angels outside? Let me tell you who will not enjoy snow angels. Somebody wearing a tank top, shorts, and flip-flops. But you give me somebody that got on a big parka with a hoodie on it, and some and some uh, thermal wicking pants and some boots laced up with some good socks. Oh, they'll be out there making snow angels all day. So, so in your if this is a dry season, then navigate this season until you get to the season where it's back to the way it is. And here, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's another thing that you have to understand is that as a husband, you are giving to your wife not to get. You are giving to your wife to give. You got to remember, we are to love our wives the way Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He gave his body on the cross before we even knew to appreciate it and reciprocate it. There are hundreds of millions of people that do not appreciate the finished work of Jesus Christ's broken body on that cross. And guess what? He ain't taking it back. He ain't sitting up there petty like, I, I bled out for you and you ain't going to even live for me. I did all this for you and you can't even. No, he did not give to get. He gave to give. For God so loved the world that he gave. He just gave it. So you got to check your motives on why you're giving it, especially in a dry season. Because if you're giving it to get, you're going to get pissed off. And you're going to be disappointed. Then you're going to be side-eyeing her. And then you are susceptible to leave yourself op open and vulnerable to another woman. Because you can't get a thank you from your wife at home during a dry season. But if you gave coffee to your coworker, she's like, oh, my God, thank you. Oh, my God, you're so sweet. And if you don't have yourself anchored and balanced, all of a sudden, you can't wait to get to work to give her coffee. Because she gives you the 20% that you're not getting in your marriage right now. I'm just trying to put you up on game. I'm trying to give you the, the end game. I don't want you to just deal with this, this, this in, interim that you're in. I want you to be able to look out for the long game. So I hope that helps you. All right, where, 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 we, where we at? Do we have one that was up? Hey, Tim Ross. I just wanted to ask you, when will the basement get back to interviewing everyday dwellers? A lot of us did fill out the Google form. I know you've been really busy and you've been interviewing some amazing people on the podcast, and I really appreciate that. I would love to know if you're still doing the Google Forms. And also, I was thinking maybe we could have a dwellers party or maybe like a meetup with all people that are dwellers who have subscribed and bought the B-Side app. Maybe there could be 
like a meetup once a year or something that you could be a part of. Just thought I submit that to you. Love you so much. And I'm really, really, really thankful for your submission to God because you have taught me how to be faithful and keep my faithful God. I love you. Thanks for being my uncle. <laughs> I love you, girl. Yo, uh, I appreciate that so much. Um, yes, we we actually have um, some episodes coming up with some regular dwellers. Um, and I don't even want to say it like that, but like the people that have filled out those Google forms, yes. We have not forgot about you. Um, dwelling place. I know that was some verbiage we had for if we link up in the future. Yes, dwelling places are actually coming. We just got to figure out how to make dwelling places safe. Um, because if we have people that host them or oversee them, we got to make sure that they don't uh, abuse the safety that mm -hmm. that we've grown to give. When when you have to scale something, that that's where it can be a little bit more. You know, I'm not a control freak, but but when you have something as precious as a space that we've created, you don't just give that away mm -hmm. willy nilly. And so. Um, we are working on some dwelling places, but that meetup, though, we are going to go on a basement tour um, sometime uh, in the near future. Uh, and that's where we, we, we want to meet up with everybody. But we will have people on this couch that have filled out that Google form, and I look forward to those, in addition to us having some dates on the calendar uh, where we come to the city and we get to uh, vibe together. So thank you so much for... Uh, asking that question and thank you for your encouragement as well. I love you. Hey guys, quick question for Tim. So I'm kind of dealing with a transition problem right now. I have been working with the state of Texas for going on three years, February 8, 2024. Every day I wake up, I know I'm doing something good, you know, but at the same time, I know I'm helping people, but at the same time, I just feel like I wake up and I don't have the joy in my heart. I don't have the energy, just the willpower to just get up and do it. Like I just physically and mentally, I'm just checked out. So I recently got my esthetician license, um, August, 2023. So now I'm a licensed esthetician with the state of Texas. Um, I've been having this urge to just go ahead and just quit with the state and, open my spa I don't want to just jump into quitting with the state just because I feel like God is telling me to just finish strong and then give it up but like how do I know I have finished strong like how do I know when it's time to go ahead and hang that up and move forward I am kind of feeling a pressure right now because I have a baby due April 2024 so I just want the best for my child. I want to have more freedom, more time. I want to wake up and love what I do, you know. So could you please just give me some insight on this? For sure. I love you, girl. Um, I, I know what it is to be in those seasons where you feel like transition is coming and you, you're you trying to wait on God's timing and you're trying to be sensitive to what all that looks like. First of all, congratulations on getting your license in 2023 and congratulations on the upcoming birth of your child, April of 2024. Like all of this is new and, and, and exciting. Um, your job with the state, you said that God told you to finish strong. If he's the one that told you to finish strong, he will also tell you when you're finished. Mm -hmm. It's that clear. If you heard him clearly on finish strong, He's the one that tells you when it's finished. Now, here's the thing you got to understand. Um, you don't have to feel good in between now and when it's finished. But you do have to be faithful. Like, I can't tell you how many people are, that are in this live chat right now, they hate their job. Mm -hmm. They don't feel fulfilled in it. They don't wake up every morning like, I, I, I can't believe I woke up again that I get to do this job for another eight hours. Or 10 hours or 12 hours. Everybody's not in, in their, like, passion career uh, position. Like, th there's some people that's getting up every morning like, oh, God, thank you for provision, but ugh, I can't stand this job. That's okay. 
remember what a job is for. A job is for provision for you to be sustained and for you to be able to do the things that you really want to do. I used to work for Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation, uh, uh, and I, I worked in a call center. Thank you for calling. Boom. Thank you for calling Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation. Corporation. This is Tim. How may I assist you? Yes. Is it a is it a is it a lease or is it, or or are you paying uh, monthly payments? Well, would you be paying monthly payments? I forgot what the thing is. It was lease or something else. Then 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 you go to the loan origination screen, and then you got people that were returning their leases. You got people that had wrecked the car, but it's a lease. You had people that were owning the cars and they forgot to pay their payments. And I handled all of that. I was also a motivational speaker uh, within corporate because that's when I was doing stand up comedy, and so I would try to make these people laugh. Uh, the credit department, they took themselves too seriously. I mean, good Lord, just because you're in the credit department doesn't mean that you have to be so stiff. Um, but those are the people that we did everything with, and um, it was a job. Like, I, like, my purpose and my ultimate passion wasn't in this job, but my check was. I was preaching on the weekends, but preaching wasn't supporting me. So Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. is what I went and did for my livelihood. That's where I worked when I first got married. And then in the evenings, that's when I uh, went and did uh, all my studio uh, sessions for rapping. That's when I wrote my comedy stuff. On the weekends, I would go preach places. I would go do stand-up places. I would go rap places. And by Monday, I was back at Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation, 7 a.m to 4 p.m. So sometimes your job is just what provides for you to go do the thing that you really love. And so it could be you are working for the state. You are working for the state right now. And in working for the state right now, the only assignment that, that you have is to remain faithful at this job. Get paid. You got a baby coming in April. And so finish strong. Perhaps you're supposed to be uh, uh, at this job uh, so that you can continue to have your benefits up until when this baby is born and, y you know, the first, you know, three months after it's born or the first six months or the first year. You may be at this job another year. Again, you don't have to like it. You just got to be faithful. I've been in, I've been in uh, paid staff positions at churches where, where the grace was off me and I'm like, good Lord, I don't want to be in this situation no more. And I still had to go to work and I still had to love people. So so and if you if you became the most bomb esthetician of all time, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be some days you wake up like, good Lord, I can't. I don't feel like dealing with these clients today. The place where I go get my braids, I, I, I'll, I'll remain anonymous. Um, I think this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, my stylist was like, listen, some of these people come in here with the nastiest braids you've ever seen. Haven't maintained them in four months. Scalp look like oatmeal. And it stinks because they've sweated in it and they've, they, they've not kept it moisturized, conditioned, or anything. So now you got a scabby, oatmeal-y scalp and it stinks like an old wig. And you got to, uh, and they didn't even loosen the braids, so you got to do it all. Ugh. And she loves that job. She just hates that head. <laughs> you know how many pastors love what they do? They just hate some of their members. <laughs> I know hate's a strong word. They, our brother, I don't hate my member. You strongly dislike them. I, I can't tell you how many pastors that I know that would be like, man, Lord, if you would just let this member go to the church down the street, I'd be so happy. Lord, if you would just move this person on, just... I think they work for Boeing. If they could just get relocated from my area, it's like I, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather have four single mothers that that just give me fourteen dollars a month than to deal with this joker giving me fourteen grand a month. Like I mean, some like let's just be honest. You got to take the good with the bad when it comes to anything that you do. Some of y'all swear you're a CEO, but but you don't know how to do payroll. I just don't like it. Well, then don't be a CEO.
Oh my gosh. Uh what we got? Hey Unc. So I have a quick question for you. Um been watching, you know, rocking with the basement since twenty twenty and the talk on Tuesdays. Just wanna say a quick thank you to you and Juliet oh, gee. for your dedication to, you know, discipling and mentoring young people and young adults. Um, so anyway, my question is, recently I uh, just, you know, went through a breakup. You know, I've processed it, grieved it, um, and all of the things, right? But currently today, I feel like um, the assignment that God has given me is, you know, one of preparation. So to kind of prepare for, you know, what I'm praying for, which is, you know, a future marriage and relationship, um, so I guess my question to you is, what are some ways or tips to prepare for that? Um, right now, you know, that's my assignment to prepare, not to really be in search of, you know, the next relationship, but to kind of, you know, prepare my heart and my mind for that. Um, so I've gotten a couple of books. Uh, I know that, I don't know, I hope it doesn't sound too cheesy, but I got a couple of books, you know, on, you know, things that, you know, a wife should do, um, what a godly marriage would look like. Um, I've been consuming content, you know, people who, you know, got some years in the game, right? So they have, you know, tips and stuff, you know, video content, sermons and whatnot. But what are some specific tips that you may have that can help to prepare? Um, you know, I'm 36, getting a little older. So that's the season that I'm in, you know, settled in life per se, um, mm -hmm. but what sort of tips would you give to a female who's trying to prepare for their marriage? Thanks again. I love you, girl. So um, I'm, the books are great. I have nothing to add to that. Here's, here's, here's your cheat code. Work on you. Not what, not you in response to someone else, just you. If you dig into you, you will find out everything you need to know about you and how that impacts any relationship you can get in. What I know about myself at 48, if I knew this at 23, when I said I do to Juliet, child, please. She thinks I'm the bomb now. Ooh! She would have wrote 14 songs about me and put, put Beyonce to shame. If I was the man at 48 that I was at at 23, um, the, 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 the most extravagant gift that you can give your spouse, your future husband, is context to who you are. And you can't give them you can't give that to him unless you know you. I, this is a cheat code. I hope everybody gets this. I can't tell you how many times Juliet and I have sat down with a couple and they know everything going wrong with the other person and don't have no clue what's going on with them. They cannot even see how they've contributed to the dysfunction in their relationship. My wife don't do this and my wife don't do that and she don't do, my husband won't do this and he always talk about that and I'm sitting there like, do you see you? Because every spouse comes and sits down with us and they swear it's the other person. If the other person would just stop doing this, we'd be okay. Can't say you for nothing. This is how Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden. Because they couldn't see them. It was the woman you gave me. God asked Adam, where are you? It's a therapist question. It's the first self-awareness question, the first, the first question ever spoken by God is, where are you? <laughs> and people sit down and they don't know where they are, but they swear they know where their spouse is. So I'm telling you, the most extravagant gift that you could give your spouse is to know where you are. Hey, I just want you to know, if you ever see me respond like this, it's because of the trauma I had as a child. Hey, I just want you to know I discovered I have a mother wound. Because I was never nurtured by my mom, I'm a little rough around the edges. And so that's gonna, the way you might experience me as a result is a little bit more independent. 
I, I have a strong will. I, I promise you I have a soft inside. It just takes a little bit longer for me to access that because I didn't, I didn't grow up with a nurturer around me. Hey, I have a father wound, so I need you to know I have massive insecurities, and you can say something so true but the wrong way, and I promise you I'll shut down for two weeks. I just learned this about myself, so I just want you to know, if you ever see me shutting down, here's the way to get me back. I'm working on this part of me, but I'm, I, I just found out it's a father wound thing that I have. My dad always yelled at me. He always critiqued me. So even if you're telling me the truth about me, if you say it in a certain way, it just triggers me. Do you know, that's a gift. You know how difficult it is? If you've done work and, 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 the, and the other party has it and you're like, what's wrong? And they're like, nothing. And you looking like, I can see right through you. Like, I I know something's wrong. And I actually know what's wrong, but I don't want to say it for you because you're going to be, don't be using that. Don't, just because you go to counseling, that don't work for everybody. It actually does, but. I got, you know, God's working on me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, God's working on you, but you need to let somebody else work on you. Because you do, do you do your own fade? Or is God working on that? God working on your headline? God's working on me on the inside. Is he working out that cancer? Or are you getting chemotherapy? I'm letting, I'm letting God, I'm, I'm, in a, and I'm, I'm in a place right now where I'm just letting God work on me. Can he get that cavity? See, y'all be, be Jesus glittering God into stuff that, because you don't want to do work. Stop using God for an excuse for the work you won't do. Pissing me off. It, like, it's literally flashing me back to the people that I used to sit here and, and I'd be sitting right across from him like, yeah, no, nah, you know, I'm just praying about this and God, I'm, I'm letting God just slowly but surely. No, nah, nigga, you just scared of counseling. Just say I'm scared of me. I respect you so much more, but I know you can't say that because you're not self-aware. But just say I'm, I'm, I'm scared of me. I'm scared to go dig into my soul because what I'm going to find is going to scare the hell out of me and I'm not going to know how to act afterward. Just say that. But I'm telling you right now, the most extravagant thing you can give your future husband, I believe you're going to get married. You're not late. Let me holler at you real quick. You're not late. God's timing is different from every, for everybody. You are not late. You are right on time for the divine plan of, that God has for your life. You've been a bridesmaid several times. You've rejoiced for other people. You've shed your tears. God, when, when is my time? He has the perfect person for you. Because it didn't happen in your time doesn't mean that God does not have a time. So don't believe the lies of the enemy. You are not getting older. You're getting better. And, and you're going to be a gift to a man that's going to know how to steward you. Because you're not going, thank you, Holy Spirit, you're going to work on yourself now so that by the time you walk down the aisle, you know that you are giving this man a gift. And he knows that that is what he's receiving. That breakup you had from this du last dude, he did, he does he he wasn't gonna steward you right. So don't get back with him. Hear me on that. Do not get back with him. Cause he gonna come around. He gonna come back around. Don't get back with him. He fit who you were, not who you will be. I felt that thing. I felt that thing in my nowhere. Huh? That's what them country saints be saying. I know that thing in my nowhere. Honey, <laughs> baby, I felt that thing. <laughs> that's them, that's them, that's them big black mamas. In that old, that, that, that old sanctified church. Honey, I felt that thing. I felt a shift. <laughs> I felt a shift in the atmosphere. Uh, yes. Thank you. Hi, Uncle Tim. I just have a quick question. I am a single mom who is raising a seven-year-old little boy who is very sensitive. And whenever he feels like the spirit is moving, he'll begin to cry. His father is very involved, but he's not saved. And he believes that, you know, boys shouldn't cry, men shouldn't cry, or that he's soft or I'm babying him. But I want to create a safe place where... 
um, he knows that it's okay to cry and he knows that it's okay to feel a certain way about God. Any advice? Yes. Um, we, we need an uncle involved. We need a, we, we need a, we need a pastor, a youth pastor, a children's pastor. We need another man to offset the toxicity of uh, the daddy. Because that, that, that suck it up, be a man, don't cry, you're soft. That's just wild. That's who it is? Yeah. Who is that? Oh, she's so pretty. And this kid is so handsome. Y'all sending pictures now? <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all love y'all. Y'all are amazing. Come through, pumpkin patch. Okay. It's good, it's good to have a face with the with the voice. Anyway, um, I need you to supplement supplement uh for, for your son's life uh the male role models that that you want to help shape him. I'm glad that the father is very involved, but obviously we don't we don't want only daddy. And the reason why your word's gonna be helpful, but nothing shapes a boy like a man. And so I want you to still as mommy, nurture him, validate him, and all of that. But then let's also find um, uh, someone in addition to daddy that exemplifies the behavior and the attributes that actually validates that in your son. Because I'm a sensitive person. I can cry at the drop of a dime. Noah is the same way. Nathan is not. Nathan is more like mom, like Juliet, and, and he, 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 he's very cerebral, and he processes um, uh, logically. He, he needs time to think before he speaks. Nate, uh, Noah and I, please, we, we cry at a drop of a hat. We want to process everything now. We, 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 we're we verbal processors. We want to talk it all about now, talk about all of it now. We, we, we don't care if it's a verbal mess as long as we get to the end and it's good. So uh, just encourage that and nurture that in your son, and then let's get some other people around there as well. So... Yeah, hope that helps. Hi, Tio Tim. This is Nicolette. I'm in Maryland. I am in search of an answer. I wonder if you can just guide me to how I can find my purpose. Um, She's from the like islands. To, or of course, fulfill my destiny in this lifetime. I'm currently active duty in the military, um, and I, you know, I don't want to continue my contract, but I'm just trying to find out what the next step is but okay god where next do you want me and i feel as though i struggle hearing his voice though i know that he's with me i'm not alone how do i find my purpose and be sure of it thank you for your time thank you appreciate you um all the girls are talking today yeah all the girls is, is A lot of girls today. Yeah, yeah 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 i love it i love it um, so when it, yeah, she does have an island accent. Um, so when it comes to, when it comes to, um, finding your purpose, I'm, I'm about to mess up. I'm about to piss some people off. I, I feel it. I like, I like, I just, when I set it up, I'm like, oh God, this is going to hurt some people. The church, the church has really jacked people up. When it comes to purpose, because we make it seem like at 20 years old, 25, 30, 35 years old, you are supposed to know what you're supposed to do for the rest of your life. This is my purpose on the earth. I do this. And now I'm going to leave my job to go on a quest to find my purpose was David not in his purpose when he was a shepherd? If he was not there, would he have been in place to be where he was on the day that he kills Goliath? If he goes, you know what? I've been anointed with oil by Samuel. I'm going up into a cave so I can prepare to be the king. He would actually miss being in place and in position to get to the battle to kill Goliath. I'm in a cave. What you doing, man? I'm just waiting for the Lord to make me king. You know, they, they poured that oil on me, and I, I know that's my ultimate purpose. 
And so I'm just going to stay in this position in this cave until the Lord calls me out and tells me I'm supposed to be in my purpose. <laughs> nah, fool, go back to go back to tending them sheep, fam. Because you need to be there so Jesse can call you to give you the cheese and the bread that's going to get you to the battle. So I think we I think we do it. Uh, I think the church has just done a, 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 a oh, we just miss a lot. Uh, not there's some great churches that that are really good at helping people find their purpose, but we got to talk about purpose as a po a, a, as far as it being seasonal as well. Do you know my purpose was to be a lead pastor, and was for seven years, and you know that purpose is over. Do you know my purpose now is to be a podcaster? Do you know my purpose in five years could be something completely different than this? Like. When you think about purpose, this has to be more about who you are and not what you do. My purpose is to upset the world with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. I can do that being a regional manager of at and I can do that being a manager of CC's Pizza. I won't like that job. But my purpose will remain the same. I don't want to be the manager of CC's Pizza. And... If I had to be, I'd do it. So, so your purpose has to be more about who you are. I was put on this earth to upset people's world with the message, love, and hope of Jesus Christ. That is my purpose. How is that purpose expressed right now? Through podcasts. How was it expressed in the past? Through being a lead pastor for seven years. How was it expressed before that? By being on staff at a church. By being an itinerant speaker, by being a young adult pastor for four years, like by working at CarMax, the auto superstore, by working at Nissan Motor Acceptance Corporation, like like your purpose has to be more about who you are than what you do. You're in the military right now. God has a purpose for that. You leave the military. He still has purpose for you. You get married and become a stay-at-home mama, he still got purpose for you. You wind up taking a bigger corporate contract and a bunch of people in the military know Jesus. He has purpose for you no matter what you do. So stop looking for one thing. I can't tell you how many people are depressed in this season of their life because the last season is over. Now they think they have no more purpose. I can't tell you how many pe how many pastors are white knuckling the pulpit and won't retire because they actually think when they retire they have no more purpose. So they got a death grip on that thing. I mean, they just clawing it. Every time they get every time, every time they say, you know what, I think I got two more years. Eighteen months go by and they're like, I just feel new. F the new winds of passion are in me. I just feel like God, oh, God's just, you know what? I thought I was done, but I just feel, oh, God, I feel it again. No, you're scared. You're scared of being insignificant, sir. You're scared of being insignificant, ma'am. You don't know who you are outside of what you do. I just, I got another book in me. I, 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 I'm Caleb now. Everybody turns into Caleb when it's time to quit. <laughs> I have another mountain in me. I, I have another mountain. I just, uh-uh, bless God. I just feel like, uh-uh, I have another mountain. I can feel it. God's about to, uh-uh, he's about to do a new thing. If he can use Trump and Biden and look, look how old they are. And they're running all of America. I can't run this church. I don't know. Maybe I'm prophesying. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I'm telling you right now, this is what I know. I know it. I've seen it this close. You don't know how to pass the baton. Because you are deathly afraid of being irrelevant. You have an insatiable need to be needed. Do you know that Saul was king for another 37 years after the anointing was taken away from him? <laughs> I would have thrown javelins at David, too. Imagine having to be the king of Israel and the spirit is not on you. Ooh, that's got to be painful. Child, please. I would have hated my son, too. <laughs> Any position you stay in past the, the season you're supposed to be there, 
it's just, it's not even worth it. It's not even worth it. I have left some great positions, but the Holy Spirit said the season was up. I could have kept my job. I'm good at what I do. Nobody was going to fire me. Outside of illegality and immorality, ain't nobody going to fire me from what I do. But I'd rather be in the will of God than the position of a man. Because I am not what I do. I am who I am. I am Timothy. That's who I am. I was a lead pastor. That's what I did. But I am Timothy. Timotheus in Greek. Honoring God and honored by God. That's who I am. I was put on this earth to honor God. And reciprocally, I am honored by God. That's, And I will upset the world with the message of love and hope of Jesus Christ for as long as I live. Until God takes breath from my body, I will upset people's world. There will come a time, if God lets me live long enough, that no one's going to want to hear from me. And that is fine. I will pour into the next generation. I will happily go sit myself down somewhere. But I will always have something to do. Because as long as I have breath in my body, I will have purpose. But I doubt at 72 I'll want to travel and go on tours. At 72? I don't think I want to do that at 72. I'm 48 right now. That, that, that's, a, that's a fair bit away. What is that, 22 years away? From, 20, well, that's about 22 years away. If I did my math right, I'm 48, 72. That's 22 years or 24 years. That's 24 years away. I'm 48. And then two, yeah, I'm four, that's 24 years away from now. I'm cool right now. I'll, I'll run this, listen, I'll run this play for, I could run, I could run this basement play easily for a decade if God give me strength. I feel like the older I get, the more uh, influence he gives me with younger people. So I'll, I'll run this play for a decade. But when I'm 72, fam, that sounds tiring right now. I might be a little more grumpier. Y'all might be asking my questions like, I told you this already, damn it. <laughs> I, I, I might, I just, how the hell, how, how the hell y'all still asking me the same questions for 20 years? I, I already told you about your damn purpose. I'll be barking and you'll be like, oh, I think it's time for you to go. <laughs> but you're not nice anymore. We don't like the basement no more. Please leave me alone, Mr. Tim. <laughs> then y'all will be like, y'all won't be like, that's Uncle Tim. You'll be like, that's my grumpy Uncle Tim. D please don't ask him anything. He's at, he's all questioned out. We've asked him questions for 15 years. He doesn't want to answer any more questions. He's really pissed if you ask him a question. We don't want to ask any more questions. <laughs> ah, three minutes left. I love you guys. Uh, it's been great uh, hosting and having this time with you. Um, I got a great guest that I get to do a pod with. That's going to be upcoming. Of course, I'm not going to tell you who that is now. Uh, but we're going to get this pre-record done. And then, um, yeah, I think we talk. Oh, oh, shoes. Listen, I don't know whose Bigfoot this is. Lord have mercy. This, this, this shoe right here. Um, that, man, that's is Okay. Just never ended. Yeah, <laughs> just, it just, just kept going. I'm gonna have a conversation with Hector after this pod the is board over. Is being taken away. Yeah, that board is. That board. That I'm a. Um, I'm I'm gonna put like a. It's beautiful. I'm gonna put a noise limit on that. Like I'm a, like I'm gonna give Hector like within a two hour pod. I'm gonna give him four. <laughs> You're on a Ford board maximum. You can only hit the board for, and that way you got to make it count. Cause like, <laughs> I just can't have you <laughs> like, like a twelve year old on the damn board. <laughs> we got the B side, fifteens. Look at this. As a as a as a man of average height, that God blessed me with. Cause everything's in America is made for me. It's, it's made for a guy that's 5'9", with a size 9 shoe. I, I can pull anything off the rack. It fits. This? Bro, you at big and tall. Like, you, you, you are stomping through things. Like, you cannot commit a murder. Because you're going to, this shoe print is going to leave an imprint in carpet. Like, you, there's no place that you could get away with a crime. He was tall. He had a size 15 shoe. 
It looked like he had on bananas on his feet. That's what it looked like. Um, this is, hey, we got, the, and these are our last pair, Juliana? Last pair. We have gone through this colorway. That bright yellow matches the frames. Listen, man. We got, I, and I've seen the dwellers uh, take pictures of them uh, and leave it in the Discord chat, but hey, put it in Instagram as well so that we can, um, so that we can repost it. But these are the size 15 B side Air Max 1997 colorway designed by me. I designed these. And uh, we got them. The last size is for size 15 in men's, size 12 for women. And so um, if you are one of the last sons of Anak, uh, only my Bible people get that one. <laughs> If you are one of the last sons of Anak and you have, uh, or daughters, and you have size 15, size 12, you've already be, uh, downloaded the B-Side app, you are a monthly subscriber, or you are, shout out to over, I think it's now over 2,000 people that are like annual subscribers to the app. Like salute y'all and salute everybody else that is a that is a monthly member and you support and you haven't like supported ten dollars for like one month and then like just took it off like thank you and if you had to take it off for budget reasons i'm not mad about that um rocket mortgage is having everybody check their subscriptions but that's fine um <laughs> but size 12 for the girls uh size 15 for the guys and um listen the these these are going to be the hitters and then in the summer i'll design a new colorway and we'll get them out but b side b side for life what is this Hey, real time. These are our real time uh, active, active subscribers. Five thousand two hundred and eleven. Let's go. Total users twenty three thousand users on the app. That's amazing. Two thousand fifty eight yearly subscribers. Three thousand one hundred and fifty three monthly subscribers. Can I just get okay? Twenty three thousand total users. That's dope. But can we holler at these 18,000 that are just sitting out here like, any, got any more free content? In, uh, do you got any more free content? I just, uh, I'm just here for the free content. You just show up to, you just show up to the food court uh, in a mall and you're like, can I just have the samples? On, can I get, can I get 14 toothpicks of the Szechuan beef? I, do, I, I just want, is it, is it okay if I have 14 samples of the Sheshwan. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying Sheshwan right now. But Sheshwan is so funny to me. Come on, man. Stop. Buy a meal. Get yourself the fried rice and the Sheshwan and the broccoli juice. Stop playing. It's $10. It's not a... What are we doing? 18,000 of y'all are just holding out? Are you praying? Are you trolling? What are you doing? Oh, I get it. No, I'm not going to be petty. I was about to say something petty. That would have been, that would have been, do you see what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit would check you in real time. The Holy Spirit's like, all right, flesh. So just so y'all know, I don't know how you get through a whole day without <laughs> 33,000 thoughts come through. I don't think, I don't think all of them is going to be glory, glory to glory to glory to God. You know what I mean? Some of them going to be like, some of them going to be crazy. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, um, I'm about to hit y'all with this uh, Baptist closing, and we're going to be out. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you guys, and until next time, be. What's up, NYC? I am so excited to be in your city. It's going to be absolutely amazing when we all get together. So press be with me and let's let whatever gonna be just in why. Whatever gon' be, just be. Uh, yeah. So press be with me, and let's let whatever gon' be, just be. 